called everything from freedom fighters to cyber terrorists. Yes, we're talking about Anonymous, the infamous hacktivist group that has the government shaken in their boots with their shutdowns of some of the most secure government websites. Now, one of the self-proclaimed members of the leaderless organization has fled to Canada to escape federal hacking charges. His alias is Commander X, and in some recent interviews, he's made some startling claims. He says that Anonymous may very well be the most powerful organization on Earth, and that the group of 50,000 members worldwide have access to every classified database in the U.S. government. So are his claims overblown, or is Anonymous really as much of a threat as the government's been hyping it to be all along? Here to answer that and more is Vigilante on the Run, Commander X himself. I asked him, how are we supposed to know if he's really a member of a group that's supposed to remain anonymous? Check it out. Well, um, that's not actually my fault. Uh, you can blame the federal government and the FBI for stripping me of my mask and, and uh, you know, outing me to the world, my real identity. Um, as for whether or not uh, I'm truly uh, am now or ever was a, a, a participant in the idea known as anonymous, I guess uh, I guess you've got a point. There is no real way to prove that, is there? Um, let's hope they have as much difficulty in court proving it as as uh, anybody else would. So X, you you gave an interview to the Montreal Gazette uh, this week, and you made um, some pretty interesting claims. One being that Anonymous is the most powerful organization in the world, possibly, and another saying that um, Anonymous is sitting on every classified database, and it's not just that they've accessed it, it's that the people in these agencies have actually given Anonymous information. Um, talk a little bit more about that. Well, I have nothing more to say. What do you want to know? <laughs> well, I mean, why would these people in these agencies give, compromise themselves by giving Anonymous uh, information like that? Well, I think that, you know the same reason that they have been. This see the thing is this is not a new um, situation. This has been going on for for a long, long time, and you know Bradley Manning unfortunately um, went ahead and bragged to some people that he was that he couldn't trust and got himself hung up. But he's not the first young person. Um, in, in, in this world of intelligence, in this world of secret government data, to become very, very frustrated with the crimes that he was seeing committed um, under the flag of the United States of America. And so it really shouldn't be a big surprise to anybody, nor should it be really that astounding that with all the publicity uh, Anonymous has been receiving in, in the recent, say, past two years, that people would come forward wanting to be a part of it, and that some of those people would be amongst the, uh, what, approximately 12,000 individuals in the, in the United States of America who have access to classified databases. So this really is, is not as astounding, I think, as people think. Um, sure. Well, X, you also said that, um, you, you said that the U.S. crimes, uh, crimes of the U.S. government go far beyond just killing of innocents and that once people find out, um, they will be very shocked. I mean, what is Anonymous waiting for? I mean. Here we are uh, in the face of this militarized crackdowns on Occupy Wall Street. I mean, what? Why the delay? I mean, let's let's get him out there. Well, we're going to try to do something a little bit different. That's why. Um, one of the things we're trying to do is learn. That wasn't me. I hope was that me? No, go for um, it. Uh, one of the things we're trying, attempting to do, is to learn from the mistakes of the past. And I think that the way. Um, the situation went down with Bradley Manning and, and the, uh, the, the, the previous uh, giant weeks. Um, it, it, it's perhaps true that there was no other way to handle that situation. These databases were huge, uh, and they, they contained a, a, a massive amount of, of, of things that needed to be gotten out to the public. But what we're trying to do is approach it a little bit differently. And what we're doing is examining the contents of these databases and homing in on certain individual things like the crime that I mentioned, uh, summary execution of, of, uh, uh, of uh, enemy combatants, and, and try and find a way to garner evidence in such a way that we don't have to release the, 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 the source document and therefore not um, endanger the original source or endanger our access to that database. And just, this may or may not... This may or may not work, but it's going to take time, and, and it's something that we want to try 
to do things a little bit differently and, and not release the source documents, um, but try to use those documents to home in and then find other evidence that's in the in a more public domain. It just seems like uh, like they should be released if if you guys are sitting on them. But I, I understand what you're saying. Let's talk a little bit more about what else you said about Anonymous being one of the most powerful organizations in the world. I mean, do you think that this is kind of feeding into the whole government line and and how cyber terrorism is the greatest threat we should be combating and really going to aid their crackdown on the internet? It almost gives them it almost gives them the platform to be like, yeah, see, this is exactly what we're talking about. This is why we need this legislation. Look, this is a war. I mean, straight up, this is a war, probably one of the, the biggest culture and, and, and social and political wars of our time, maybe of the last thousand years. And it's a war for the heart and soul of civilization. These people, this government, this criminal government this illegitimate criminal government in the United States of America um, is going to do whatever they're going to do. They're going to squash any resistance no matter what form it takes. They're going to brand any resistance as, as terrorism um, no matter what form that resistance takes. If that resistance is in any way successful, if it's in any way able to reduce their power and threaten their power base, then then that's what's going to happen. There's there's absolutely nothing I or, or anybody in Anonymous or anybody in the Occupy movement can do um, to to somehow pull our punch or to somehow make this more palatable to them because this is their downfall that they're looking at. X, um, that leads me to my next question. Um, you know, they, they have come out and said that it's not a matter of if but when there will be a cyber terrorist attack that will dwarf 9-11. I mean, do you think that there's a possibility that they'll just stage one? I, I, and use anonymous I, I would, as the fall people for it. I would. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't put it past them. You know. I, I have my great suspicions about this report that anonymous was going to shut off the electrical grid, and I think that was a huge red flag. Um, you know, I'm on the inside, regardless of what anybody thinks of me or, or what, what what your opinions of my position within Anonymous might be. I'm on the inside. I'm deeply on the inside, and I can tell you, for a rock solid fact, it was never even discussed amongst anybody with any influence within Anonymous to shut down the power grid, nor was it ever discussed to shut down Facebook or to shut down um, the the internet. And and yet, all of these uh, things have appeared under the Anonymous brand. Um, and so, you know, it's true that we have rogue elements and we have some, some crazy uh, people that have become involved in, around the fringes of the movement, but a, a lot of this really smacks as a red flag. And so absolutely, I think it's absolutely possible that they would state something. And this is, this is how, like, mu how much like FBI, so just to wrap up the interview really quickly, X, how much FBI infiltration do you think is currently in Anonymous? I mean, we know that there was the informant behind the, the strap for uh, leaks. Uh, do you think that it's elements of it are compromised? And are you willing to come out right now and say that you are not an informant? I, I am not an informant for the FBI. Um, if I was, I'd be living a lot more comfortably <laughs> than, 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 than I am right now. I mean, I'm on the run. Um, I, I go from coffee house to coffee house, city to city. Um, my lawyer can verify for you a lot of the details of the lifestyle I live, but it's not a pleasant lifestyle. It's not one of luxury, and I certainly would be living better than I am now. What about Anonymous as a, as a whole? I mean, do you think that there are elements that have been compromised? more so than we already know. I, I think we're massively infiltrated. I think this has always been a problem for an organization that wants to be open to new membership and to um, to have itself uh, leaderless and, 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 and uh, not, not a horizontal organization. I think it's always going to be open to that sort of thing, but this is not new. This goes back to the 60s with Cointelpro. Um, in the 80s, when I was in the apartheid movement, um, we had the same sort of infiltration on the ground. So infiltration of, of resistance movements and protest movements is not something that's new, and, and it's always been massive, and, and, and it exists. But I'll tell you, I'll give you a little secret. It's a two-way street. Um, we have a guy inside the cybercrime division who leaks to us. So, uh, you know, what one can do to us, what they can do to us, we can also do to them. It does, this goes it does seem that, that Anonymous and the hacktivist groups have one leg up on the government, and it definitely has them running scared. Thanks so much for joining us, X. I know that that uh, took a lot, and we really appreciate you taking the time and finding the means.